this week on Steel Horse Thunder. Any ride's a good ride. Uh, we raise money to help veterans. Uh, to be a patch member, every one of us have combat experience on our DD-214. Um, and in our missions, vets helping vets. So whether it be the helping the homeless vets, uh, the 22 mission, anything we can find to support veterans in the community. Then we get to test ride a brand new Harley Davidson motorcycle. Harley listening to their customers wanted another bagger in their line of Turin mics that had a fairing on it, but was stripped down. So it'd be a nice clean slate for you to do whatever you want to with it. And voila, it came out with the Electroglide standard. It comes in an assortment of colors too. It comes in black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And black, <laughs> and black. Still Horse is brought to you by Leidendorf Law with over 60 years experience in motorcycle and automotive injury cases. People talk about your one-stop shop. Well, Flat Out Motorsports is definitely a one-stop shop. Maybe you like to hit the streets on two wheels, whether you're a touring guy, whether you're a cruising guy, or maybe you like the sport bikes. If you'd rather play in the dirt, there's four wheels or there's two wheels. Or maybe you've gotten to that point where you're ready for an extra wheel. They got the Can-Am Spider and the ever so cool slingshot. Or maybe you don't like the dirt or the road, then you can get on the water take this baby for a ride. No matter what you need, no matter what brand you like to ride, all the safety gear, helmets, whatever you're looking for, it's all right here under one roof. And with the used motorcycle sales, you can pretty much find any kind of motorcycle you like. Motorcycle riders want the freedom of the open road. Unfortunately, other motorists often do not give riders the proper attention the law requires. Call us at Leidendorf Law, like family, because we are. Hey man, we have got a beautiful Saturday. This spring has been rough, man. I tell you what, our bike nights have been turned into boat nights. I mean, it's been horrible with the rain. It's not today, man. We got a beautiful Saturday. It's sunny, it's hot, it's gonna be sunscreening. Oh, oh, oh. Tell me what we're doing down here in Bloomington, Cindy. Well, this is the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association Bloomington 22 ride. And I, that's a lot of words to say, but I said it. <laughs> I was pretty impressed with that right there. Man, I'm telling you what, there are motorcycles everywhere. There's people hollering and screaming everywhere. We got people at the registration. I mean, this place is freaking packed. And as you know, just like last year, this year, all of our charity rides are sponsored by 36 Saloon in Rockville, Indiana. It is Indiana's motorcycle premier destination. If you ride a motorcycle and you haven't been to 36 Saloon in Rockville, you better get on your bike and get over there because you're about the only one left, man. This place is awesome. Inside is family friendly. Outside, you got the whole uh, hog pit out back and, and you got stages. We got live music. They've got, I mean, they got everything out there, Cindy. What do, you, what do you think about the place? I think it's awesome. There's always a lot of people out there. The service is great. It's just a wonderful destination ride. It is a great place to go to. Make sure you get out to Rockville, Indiana. It's 36 Saloon, Indiana's motorcycle premier destination. Tell them Steel Horse Thunder sent you. So we're going to find out a little bit more about this ride and uh, about this whole organization and what's going on. So what do you say, Cindy? Shall we go find out and talk to the right people? Let's go. We're here at this ride. You guys have a new chapter. Tell me about your chapter, the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Tell me about that and how you guys got it started. Um, we've been in the state for a while. Uh, the south side of Indiana really was blowing up with people showing interest in it. Three months ago, we established a detachment down here, Bloomington, Martinsville area. Um, it expanded, blew up really quick, and then with the word of the ride coming up, got a lot of interest in us. And then filed our chapter paperwork, um, which actually got approved today. What, what is the association actually about? What is it that you guys do? Uh, we raise money to help veterans. Uh, to be a patch member, every one of us have combat experience on our DD-214. Um, and in our missions, vets helping vets. So whether it be the helping the homeless vets, uh, the 22 mission, anything we can find to support veterans in the community. So are you guys associated with the 22 mission or are you a different entity than them? We are a different entity. We did link up with them on this so that way we would have someone to donate to. So we're donating 22% of everything we get today to them. And how many, how many um, chapters did you guys say you had? Uh, in the state right now, we're number five just in the state. Awesome. Well, you know, you guys do an awesome job, you know, as far as raising money for the um, veterans and you guys do a lot. We appreciate the veterans so much. We try to cover veterans rides as much as we can because we do appreciate them so much. So I'm glad that you guys have started. This is a new day for you guys. So yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. 
Um, you guys are probably excited. Very excited. It's a very good day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you guys be safe on the ride today. And uh, it looks like you guys have gotten a lot of money today because there's been a lot of riders today. And it's a beautiful day for it. Yes, yes. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Right, thank you. All right, Aztec, man, this is a really cool ride. Tons of people here, so many bikes out here, and, it, and it's early yet. And uh, But now I understand you're actually leading one of the groups out right now a little early. I am, yes. Uh, the reason being for safety purposes, uh, the numbers went up as we, the day got closer, so uh, we're going to break it down in three groups. So I'm going to lead the first group. So uh, once we reach the 50 bikes, uh, I'm going to roll out. Okay, so that so you're gonna have a big group of bikes going with you, and then there's a whole other. I mean, there's gonna be several several groups riding then. Yes, sir. Uh, we have actually three groups. We're anticipating a fourth group, so we're trying to get members to actually go over the routes, and they know exactly where we're gonna block the, the intersections for safety purposes. So. No, that's awesome. You know, that's something I, I, I with with Rolling Thunder. You know, when we rode with them out to at to DC, that's what they do with their group. You know, they break it down into like you know ten, you know twelve bikes per group. And then that way, when you're traveling, you can, you know, people need to get in and out. Other cars, I mean, let's face it, not everybody's patient. They're not going to wait. When you see when you see 50, 50 motorcycles rolling down the road, it's like, oh, man, I don't want to be stuck behind that. I get it. I get it. And it does really make it a whole lot safer when you're doing it this way. And that's the whole purpose. Safety, that's our priority. Safety, safety. And it's going to be a great route. We're going to hit Crowbar through 45, and we're going to hit Camp Adam Museum, which is great stuff there. They have a POW uh, memorial there. They were going to hit Nashville and go to Amvet in Bloomington. So, and I understand there's going to be uh, quite the spread at the Amvets. Oh yes, yeah, sir. Uh, there's going to be steak dinner, all you can drink. I mean, yeah, you got to pay for it, but great prizes. So stay to the end if you can. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Well, dude, you've been blessed with great weather. With all the rain we've had this year, you got a great day. It's going to be hot, sunny, sunscreen. Uh, this is what we've been waiting for. Yes, sir. And it's, we've been blessed as that today. 14.5, our chapter stood up today, so we're official. We have five chapters in the state of Indiana now. Right on. Well, congratulations, man. I'm going to let you go because I know yes, you got sir. a lot of people who are going to be waiting on you. But, man, thank you so much for talking to us, and have a good time. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Rick, you guys came all the way from Louisville for this ride. Um, your wife does an awesome job on seats. Tell me about this seat. When I was with a veterans club, I wanted a POW MIA seat because of the club I was with. So she made this material, she did this, this is material that's sewed over and then stitched in and then she has to hand cut it out with scissors. And she did the barbed wire and did the teardrops of blood coming off the barbed wire and this is for all the brothers and stuff we lost and they're still missing over there. That's why we did it. Well you know it's pretty amazing, I've never seen a seat that is so, um, she did a fantastic job, it's just so cool the way she did it and you said that she she does this for other people, right? Not just for herself or for you. Right, we will we will do other seats, we've done uh, uh, different logos, names, things like that. We do the inserts in the middle of them, you know, we've done snake seats. We've had bikes that showed up in the bike shows out there at the fairgrounds, the expos and took second place because of the seat. So that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's done good. They've won awards in different places when we put her seats on. Well, you know, I can understand that because, like I said, this is a fantastic job that she's doing with this. Um, and you guys are out of Louisville. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you so that they could have a seat done, where would they go? Look us up on Google. Pull up Sewing by Linda on Google, and it'll give you our information. It gives you our uh, Indiana phone number we still have and our Louisville phone number and it will actually give you a map and shows you our house and everything like that and it shows you a lot of the things we've done uh, i put a lot of the products on there uh vest extenders we're doing now for the side of vest with initials or people's names or something like that we're doing that this time of year that's pretty good since everybody's gained weight over the winter yeah there, there's been a few of them like that so but yeah we do that you know and we're a reasonable price we never raised our price we haven't raised our prices in 15 years wow. So we, we've about the same price. And everything she does, she does while you wait. You know, you don't have to bring your stuff and leave it. But we do snaps, zippers, chaps, alterations. All right, brother, we're down here at Bloomington Harley-Davidson. And, you know, a lot of bikes pulling in here for the ride and a lot of cool bikes. But yet you pulled in and it got my attention. First of all, did they make you park all the way down here at the bottom of the parking lot? I don't know. I just 
kind of avoid the crowds these days, you know what I mean? I hear you. And of course, what do I do? I chase you right down. You get off the bike. You're ready to get in the shade and, and cool off a minute. And I'm like, hey, man, could I talk to you about your bike? So tell me a little bit about the motorcycle. Well, I've, I bought it up in Whitestown. It was an old police bike. Uh, so I bought it in 88. It's titled in 81, but it's, you know, it's, it's decked out like an old school bike, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've been riding it all this time? Oh yeah, yeah. I've been driving it for over 30 years. <laughs> you know, I feel pretty proud of my bike. I've been riding it for 19 years, man. You got me way beat. And uh, it, it, it's a, so, so how does it handle? Oh, it's well. I just you know new swing arm bushings, all new brakes. I just, I just put a lot of money in it this year. But it's, but it's a rider, you know. It ain't it ain't nothing to be pretty, but. But that's what I like about it. It's just old school, and I love that. I just love the look of it. I love the way. I mean, you look you look pretty cool pulling in on it. I've got to tell you. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let you go, get in the shade, cool off, and, and avoid the crowd because there's a crap load of people up here on the other end of this parking lot. All right, man. It's good talking to you. It is freaking hot today. I think these guys are finding some shade. Is that what you're doing today? That's what we're doing. That's what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh oh. I found somebody else. So this guy over here, he must have found some shade too. You found yeah, some shade? I asked him if he'd sell some. He said it was on the house today. <laughs> well, it probably is. It's going to be a hot day today. It is are you guys doing day. the ride? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yep, yep. So what brought you out to this ride? Just support for the group. How'd you hear about it? Yeah, uh, through Bloomington's website. Awesome. Yeah. They uh, keep everybody posted well, and, and they got some good rides going on this year. So. There's a lot of good rides this year. Yeah, <laughs> any ride's a good ride. Any ride's a good ride, as long as it's not raining, and that's, that's right. all we've had lately. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so you guys just chilling and relaxing in your slingshot? Yeah, yep, just waiting to go. So what brought you out of this ride? Uh, just a great cause. So, yeah. How'd you hear about it? Uh, through the AMBETS of Post 91 in Monticello, Indiana. So is that where you're from, Monticello? Yeah. That's, that's kind of far away, right? Yep, yep, about uh, two and a half hours. Wow. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys came out today. Enjoy the ride. Thank you. This is a standard lawyer commercial. This is a dramatic shot of me walking down the hallway. This is a stage scene of me talking to clients, even though they're not actual clients. This is the closing shot in my office, where I say my catchphrase, looking professional and confident. Look, all lawyer commercials are the same, but not all lawyers are the same. Leydendorf Law has been involved in the motorcycle community for over 35 years, with many more years to come. Leydendorf Law, like family, because we are. The attorneys at Leydendorf Law have over 100 years of experience in personal injury and wrongful death litigation. Call us at Leydendorf Law. Leydendorf Law, like family, because we are. So Shana, you're here at this race. Um, Peoria is a good track to race on. I know you just won a race out in Sturgis though, right? Yeah, yeah, Sturgis went really well for me out at Rapid Hills. Um, you know, I was able to come away with the, the win there this year, so that was an exciting day for me. I bet it was. It was a, it was a good race too, we actually watched it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know, last year I came up there a little bit short with getting second place to Brandon Price, so I came into that race pretty dang hungry to, to want to get that win there, and uh, we were able to, to get the bike really dialed in. We focused all day in turn four, and uh, I think as the night went on, we showed we were fast. Well, it was a great race. Congratulations. Um, today, I hope you uh, are out on this track and run just as good as there. Um, you know, you are one, excuse my French, badass. You know, you're a small girl, you're out on this racetrack. How does it feel racing against all those guys? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know any different. You know, I grew up racing with these guys my entire life. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of female classes available when I was younger. So for me, racing with these guys, that's, that's normal. That's home for me. So, uh, you know, I'm really fortunate to, to be uh, ranked up there with these guys and, and uh, you know, be able to race them handlebar to handlebar. Well, you do an awesome job. Thanks for being out here today and thanks for talking with us. I, I do have to ask you, you know, you're very short. I'm short too, so I'm not saying that mean. I'm just saying you have a tall bike. 
Is that um, a hindrance for you to be on that tall of a bike? Uh, you know, definitely we have our strengths and weakness tracks. You know, I, I tend to struggle a little bit more on these TTs and, uh, you know, the shorter tracks just because I am small. Um, you know, it's, it takes a lot more effort for me to get my foot down and, and muscle these bikes around on the smaller tracks. So, you know, but we go to the mile tracks and, and it has a little bit of an advantage. So uh, it, it really weighs itself out throughout the year. So which track is your favorite? <laughs> Man, I... Um, you know, probably my favorite is, um, you know, I like Knoxville, Iowa. That's where I got my first uh, win and, and also made my first Twins main event. Um, but, you know, also Sacramento, Miles has been good to me as well. So, Well, congratulations on your win last week, and um, we're rooting for you today. Go out there and um, just hope you do, hope you do a win. Uh, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Don't look now. Crambo's isn't just paint. It's your one-stop shop for motorcycle gear, parts, and service. Crambo's, voted the Indy A-list number one motorcycle shop two years running, has expanded with the state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment for tuning your fuel-injected Harley and a new paint facility to make your bike stand out from all the others. Crambo's also has a new retail area complete with leather, chrome, audio, and all your parts and service needs. Crambo's, voted number one for a reason. You've been injured in an automobile collision, and suddenly your vocabulary has been expanded to include terms totally unfamiliar to you. We know accidents can be overwhelming to the injured victims and their families. You know you can put your trust in the familiar faces of Leidendorf Law. We take care of you and your family so that you can focus on recovering from your injuries. Leidendorf Law, like family, because we are. Hey, I'm up here in Indianapolis, Southside Harley-Davidson. Once again, I get to test ride a brand new Harley, and this one's kind of different. It's a brand new Harley because it had been discontinued a while back, but I get to ride the 2019 Electric Glide Standard. Brought back by popular demand, we'll find out. I like it. You don't see too many black Harleys. <laughs> I write my own jokes. I like it. Looks like looks like your your electric glide standard. I like it. I like the solo seat on there. I see it comes with the 107 motor. I do like the look with the seat like that. I like that. Sits nice, fits me perfect. It's just, I mean, absolutely perfect. Feels good. I guess we'll uh, take it out on the road and see how she does. Okay. You know, it's funny, I'm amazed at the power that these bikes have, you know, this is what we always called a bagger, you know, this is the old man's bike back in the day, and yet, you twist the throttle, man, you can feel it, it just wants it to go. That's pretty nice.
got the bat wing fairing, so you're going to have your a little bit of extra weight up there on your handlebars. And if you ever rode any kind of a touring bike, you, you understand what that is. It still handles good, still balances pretty well. Overall, I give it a thumbs up. I mean, I... You know, these new Harleys, they just, the, the vibration's gone, the, everything. It's just a smooth, smooth ride. Again, stiffer than some of your more luxury bikes, but still really nice. Well, Scott, what'd you think? Well, you know, Eric, it, it, uh, it, it handled like I kind of expected it to handle. It's, I think to me, the biggest thing, to me, it's a little stiffer, a stiffer ride, if that makes sense. I like that because, I mean, you know me, I ride a Road King an old <laughs> road king yeah and uh i keep a very stiff ride on it and you know that's one if, if somebody rides my bike his first complaint my god why don't you soften that up It'll, i like i'm a little more aggressive in the in the corners sure and, and a stiffer ride to me it works better that way um so i personally like that and i notice there's there's no radio there's no uh 12 inch screen tv in here or any of that other stuff that you see yeah. on all the new motorcycles I nowadays for a guy like me, I love that because you know me. I don't listen to the radio when mm -hmm, I ride. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't need all that stuff. I don't need GPS, and uh, so for me, I kind of like it. I like the black motorcycle. It's you just don't. You know what I mean? It's like to me, you, you'll never be able to beat a black motorcycle. Right. There's some right. really cool paint jobs. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit what, what made Harley Davidson decide to bring back the Electric Glide well, standard. So in 2009, they discontinued the Electric Glide standard. They had three color options back then. They had a blue, they had the black, and they had a black denim. But it was the same stripped down bagger look, had a two up seat on it, uh, you know, kind of like the Electric Glide Classic. So Harley, listening to their customers, wanted another bagger in their line of Turin bikes that had a fairing on it, but was stripped down. So it'd be a nice clean slate for you to do whatever you want to with it. And voila, they came out with the Electroglide standard. It comes in an assortment of colors too. It comes in black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And black, and black. <laughs> and it's got this nice red emblem on the side of the tank as a tank, mm -hmm. tank painting on it. Uh, but some other cool options on it. It's got the low profile touring seat on it. So if you're a short legged rider, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to get a little bit closer to the ground. Mm -hmm. It's got the same emulsion style adjustable shocks on it that all of your, your street glides, road glides, electric glide standards have on it. So you're going to get the same turn right out of it. The difference on this over a street glide is it's got a 16 inch uh, rear wheel and a 17 inch front rather than a 19 inch front wheel. Okay. And it's got a little different <laughs> wheel option on it. So it does give you a much different look. The saddlebags are the same, the fairings the same. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't have a radio in it. So you could put the Harley Davidson radio system in it. You could put the speakers in it if you wanted to have a radio. But by the time you do all that, I mean, you're much better just going with a regular street glide for the amount that you would pay to put the radio in. You're right at the price of a street glide. So if you're right. considering, you just want a strip down bagger, get the electric glide standard. And you know, the cool thing in 2009, the Electric Glide standard was $16,999. $18,999. 10 years later wow. on an Electric Glide standard. So $2,000 over 10 years, what is that? 200 bucks a year? That's not much. Increase in price, and it hasn't been out for 10 years. So it's just a great way to get back in a stripped down bag or under $19,000. Uh, and then, you know, it's a clean slate. You can do with it what you want. It has a 107 cubic inch Milwaukee engine in it. It doesn't come standard with anti-lock brakes on it. That is an option. It does come with security on it. Uh, all the big touring bikes come with security standard on them now. So you've got a couple ways that you can figure the motorcycle and get, get what you want with ABS or without yeah. ABS. Um, but for an inexpensive price to be in a bagger under 20 grand, man, this is the way to go. No, I agree. I agree. And that's, you know, something I was thinking about because I assumed you could add the radio to it. It's just like I even noticed, you know, shifting, you know, yep. it, it's just the toe, no heel shift yep. on there. Yep. And I'm not, it kind of caught me off guard a couple times <clears throat> trying to trying to use my heel shifter. Yeah, I know. Um, Andy and I saw you pulling out of the parking lot trying to push down with your heel. <laughs> I told Andy, there's no rear shifter on there. What the heck's he doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I, I mean, I'm just so used to that. Anything with running boards, I'm so yeah. used to using the heel shift. Yeah. But obviously you can add that to it if you want. You sure. can add a radio to it. Yep. You know, to me, 
sometimes that's what you have to do. You, yeah. you may have to buy a bike like this to get you on a bike. Yeah. It may be three or four years later before you can afford to do something else. I yeah. mean, I did that with my Road King, you know? I mean, I added stuff to it as I rode it. Right. You know, now, I mean, <laughs> obviously I've had about 20 years to, to do stuff to it now, but yeah. to me, I, I really liked it. And it did, to me, it felt stiffer. I like that. Um, the seat, even though it's a low profile seat, I still felt like I was up high enough where I could see what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did, I really liked it a lot. And again, I am a no frills guy, so for me, it works out perfect. Yeah. And you know, look at the paint job on the bike. I mean, it's the same quality standard it's on all the other ones. Look at look how the water's beating up on it from yeah. the rain. <laughs> right? You know, we're out here in the rain talking about a motorcycle, <laughs> right? but who cares? It's a motorcycle. You're gonna get wet when you ride, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. So. And I didn't when I rode, so I it yeah. timed it yeah. perfect. Yeah, you waited till I got out of the building before so you let the is, rain come down on us. No, I really liked it. I liked the way it handled. I liked the power. The 107 has still got plenty of power on it. That's, the, I think to me, mm. the biggest difference is when I twist the throttle, it goes. You twist the throttle, and it was like, you know, and I mean, not not even hot rodding. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's not. A, I'm not a hot rod kind of guy. So when I was giving a gas, I was just kind of getting on the throttle, and it was just like, I mean, it just takes right off, and it's got plenty of power, even for a big touring motorcycle. Yeah. It's got plenty yeah. of power. Well, if you remember, you know, when the when the 17s came out with the 107 cubic inch engine in them two years ago, and we debuted, you know, some of the new touring model bikes, yeah. the 107 is that Milwaukee 8 engine, four valves per cylinder, two spark plugs per cylinder, 75% less vibration at idle. In fact, the idle speed on this is about 850 RPM compared to 1100 RPM on a 103. But mm -hmm. if you took this against a 103 bike, let's say you, you took a 2013 against this bike, you're, you're gonna be, oh, I don't know, six to eight bike lengths faster, zero to 60 mile an hour, you know? Yeah. Zero to 80, something like that. So. Uh, it does have a lot of low-end torque to it. It's got some horsepower to it, and it's and you're up in the same engine size as all your other big touring bikes. So don't yeah. worry about keeping up with your buddies that are on the street glides or the specials. Right. You got the power and performance on a 107, and all of the Screaming Eagle product that Harley Davidson makes to upgrade the engine to 114 cubic inch engine, all fits on this motorcycle. So you could chrome it out. You could take the polished off of it if you wanted to chrome it out. You can bump up the engine size on it. So everything you can do to the other touring model bikes, you can do this one too. Exactly. Well, Eric, thank you very much for letting me take this one out for a ride. And you know, if you're looking for a, a good bike to get get in on, if you're wanting to go up to a bagger and and you just don't have a bunch of money, this is the way to do it right here because yep. you're getting just as much quality. Yep. I and like I, it, man. I'll get you the towel to wipe it down now before it goes back on the showroom floor. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank yeah, you very much. Thanks, Scott. All right, man. The bikes are all lined up behind us. That means the ride's getting ready to take off. That means we're getting ready to take off, Cindy. If you only had, this is your last chance of being able to tell the fans something, what would you tell them? I would tell them to go to Facebook and look us up. Look us up on our Patreon page because there's a lot of people who want to get involved. And that's the way you can get on, get involved is to go to the Patreon page. And you can get the link going to our website at www.stillhorsethunder.com. I can't add anything to that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, it's not what you ride. It's that you ride. Horse Thunder Walk. <laughs> because you know what they say. If you ain't got a limp, you ain't got shit.